Once that you accept somebody as guru, is that become his? Why don't they make you realize themselves from earlier age? Like why we have to go through all this and then you realize that after 30, 40 years you realize that this was my guru, you know, or this is my guru. If the guru has taken your lead to lead you spiritually, each birth, wouldn't it be that you would never forget him? Like if the bond is so strong with your guru, why would it break? Why do you have to go through some time in your life where you realize and by that time it's time to go again? It's like... It's a divine plan. What, who will become your guru is also divine plan. And when he will become also divine plan. <laughs> Everything depends upon the grace of God. But one thing is there, we can expedite this process by our efforts. The moment you are ready for receiving the grace, the grace will come. Holy Mother Sharda Devi says, the grace of the God is going on. The wind of His grace is going on. Now those, those boats, though they unfurl their sails, they go faster. Those who are not unfurled, they go a little slower. Whose fault it is? Grace of God, the wind is going. So it is for us. So if we really work hard, we may get quicker. We may get our what our guru quicker. This depends upon us. The moment you are ready as a disciple, in fact they have said that Guru mere laugh laugh chilla na mile koi. Actually Guru is there to give grace, but where is the disciple? Proper, proper disciple with the proper receiving capacity. Very difficult to get. So, there are qualifications for proper guru, proper disciple, and all that. So, once you fulfill the conditions of a, of a disciple, the guru will come to you and laugh your life. And where is the place of Maya? Like, how does Maya cover you so you don't even yearn for that till a certain point in your life? Maya is a covering. It is ignorance and that will be removed when we become, when we, the Maya is removed. When we are under the Maya, we cannot know why it has come and when it came. Okay? So, now, this is the thing that we are under Maya. Let us try to, now, get rid of the Maya. That's all that we can do. Narada, Narada, you know Narada? Narada. Narath wants to wanted to know what is Maya. So he asked of one Lord Vishnu, oh Lord, I want to know what is Maya. And then he said, Okay, let us I will give you an answer. Then they were travelling. Then he said, Oh Lord, you told me you will tell me about Maya. Details about Maya, what it is. He said, Yes, but at present I am thirsty. So bring fetch me a glass of water. <laughs> You know the story. Yeah, yeah. So, so that is Maya. <laughs> so it's all mother's way. So yeah. we cannot under you see Aghatan Ghatana Pati Asi Maya. That is its nature. Whatever we think cannot happen can happen by his by Maya. That is Maya. So it's very difficult to understand Maya. Or how it has come and why it has come. But one thing is that by surrendering ourselves to the Lord, we can get rid of Maya. Hmm? That is the only way. If we, if we surrender ourselves, Maya Dish, if we surrender ourselves to Maya Dish, then only He will remove Maya from us. That is the only solution. Very good question. Any other question or any other, I mean, it can, it may not be necessarily related to our subject, but any general subject, anything that you would like to know from me. Swamiji, can you tell us for adult or a child, uh, how to become pure by sharing whatever we have and caring for others so that to see the Lord in the other and whatever we have, you can give. So how to do it in a practical way, if you can tell us. 
how to teach a child that whatever he has, that's how he can yeah, share. Yeah. Or what knowledge, somebody can share knowledge, somebody can share uh, time, somebody can share this, or whatever. How, give us some examples how. Yeah. That is true that um, even by small example, you know, when you give a small toffee to a person, our Swamiji would tell when Swamiji was there, senior Swamiji, he will take a toffee and uh, he will give to the child. Then say, this is not for you, this is for your mom. Then he will go and give to mom. Again he will come. <laughs> this is for daddy. <laughs> this is for your elder brother. Now you have given so much of service you have did, so you three multiplied by two, six you get. So he was very happy. He was thinking of getting one. Because you have done so much of service, so God is very happy with you, see. You take six. <laughs> now that has entered with the child that if you give to others, it comes back multiplied twice. These are the ways in which the children can be taught. Similarly, there is a law of giving. The more you give, the more comes back to you. Swamiji says, unselfishness is more pain in the long run. Unfortunately, people do not have the patience to practice it. <laughs> it is more pain in the long run. That I have seen. The law of giving is supreme. It's a simple law of karma. The more you give, the more comes back to you. It becomes difficult for you sometimes. <laughs> so much comes back to you that it takes... So much comes to you that you have to, the whole time goes in distributing because we cannot keep anything. But the more I give, the more comes back to me. The again they have to give more because I cannot keep it. So again it comes more. That's the process, the law of giving that we have seen. We have verified it. The more you give, the more comes back to you. And Swamiji gives a beautiful example. If you Open the windows, this air will go, but the fresh air is coming. If you close the windows, the same air you have to enjoy. <laughs> same filthy air you have to enjoy. Don't you? Okay, then whole thing will get, go on getting dingy, dingy, dingy. So that is the example is given. The more you give, the more comes back to you. If you open the window, the the more fresh air will come in. That is the equation. Could you tell us your personal experience of experiencing God in your life? Of experiencing God? In your life. Well, we normally did, uh, refrain ourselves from our personal experiences because of so many reasons. But uh, I have since seen one person who, who was who had experienced God, I can say, how to know that one has experienced God? There are certain qualifications. So Arjuna asked with the of the Lord, how to know that somebody has realized God? Sita Pradgisya Kabhasha Samadhista Sikeshava Sita Dikim Prabhasheta Kima Sita Vrajeta Kim that person who has become steady first, who has got steady wisdom, or who has got that realized soul, how do I know it? How what? How does he behave? How does he act? How does he sit? Give me. Then, Sri Krishna says in the second chapter, Dukkesho do dignamana, Sukeshu vigata sriya, Vita rat bhaya krodha, Sita dhirmani ruchyate, one who is not disturbed by any more suffering in his life. And praja, then Dukkeshwaru Dignam Prajahati Yada Kama Sarvan Partha Manovatan Atmani Vakutmaratushta Sita Pragyasta Doshiti. First of all, he says Prajahati Yada Kama. Those who have given up their desires. Sarvan Partha Manovatan Atmani Vakmanatushta who is remaining satisfied with himself. He is a Sita Pragya. That is the subject you said. I can know if I am satisfied with myself. I don't need anything else. But Arjuna says, give me the objective test. How to know that others are realized or not. I can see for myself. 
Yes, I have given up my desire, I don't have any desire, yes, I have reached the goal. How do you know that others have called, reached the goal or not? So, the second shloka, that is an objective test. Dukkesho no dignamana, sukesho digata sriya, vidara kriya krodha, siddha dhirmani ruchyate. Those who are not affected by misery, any amount of suffering, and sukesho vigata sriya, he is not attached to happiness or sort of does not become to, to excessive joy, he doesn't become, he doesn't lose his balance. And Dukkeshwaru Dugnamana, Sukeshwaru Vigata, Veet Raag Bhaya Kruta, he has given up attachment, fear and anger. So, I saw one person, one of our monks, I saw many monks, but I will give an example because I cannot I have got ample number of examples where some of the monks I saw who had realized God. But I will tell about one. Because that incident happened in my presence. So, in our order, everybody cannot become Guru. President or Vice President becomes, can become Guru. They only can give initiation or mantra diksha. So, the 10th President of Ramakrishna order, Swami Vireshwarananda, he was a disciple of Holy Mother Sharda Devi, and a great monk. So I had the blessed privilege of getting Diksha from her, Vandra Ben also had the great privilege of having Diksha from her. So when he had come to a particular city, naturally there were so many devotees who used to come, then so, so many got Diksha also that time. Mantra Diksha, initiation ceremony, is a four hours, five hours ceremony. One lady devotee used to come. That lady devotee was very much devoted to Maharaj and very devoted to Sri Ramakrishna, Sarada Yisra She will bring something, cook for him and bring some food for him. She had a child, really like this, of this age, maybe seven, eight years, that's all. Just what is your age? Nine years, or almost ten years. <laughs> so, now he saw others are getting initiation. So, he went to the Maharaj and he was very happy and he was very free. The Maharaj was very free with his mother also. So, he would come any time and take chocolates from him and all that. So, he just went there. Then Maharaj gave such an, I don't want chocolate, <laughs> he said. I want Diksha from you. What will you understand of Diksha and all that? He said, no, no, I want Diksha. And then he started weeping, I want Diksha. Then Maharaj became very much this one, such a small boy, he will, he will forget the mantra and all that. Then he called his mother. His mother tried to say, that, no, no, he will, when he grow up, then he will get Diksha. No, I want Diksha. So then uh, Maharaj asked her whether should I give Diksha to her. Uh, you take care. Uh, if supposing you forget the mantra, what a mantra you give me, you just. The problem is not that. Problem is that her father is very angry man. And he doesn't believe in religion. He is an atheist, hardcore atheist. With great difficulty, I am coming to the ashram. He doesn't allow me to come to the ashram also. He was a doctor and a self-made man and very egoistic and he said nothing to it. So, he said, if he comes to know that he has been with then he will become very angry. But this boy is to repeat to Maharaj, you know, in the heart of Holy Mother. He said, okay. Don't tell now, uh, later on in proper time, you tell our father. You tell his father. That's why he told his mother. And then it was arranged. Then he gave Diksha. Now, one of the monks, he did not know all this happened. So, when the doctor came to take away his wife, he said, Doctor, congratulations, your son has got at least young age, has got Diksha, you are so fortunate. And then he was all fine. What? Even he was not allowing him to enter the doors of gate, gate, gate of the ashrama, 
his children, the child would not allow. Even he didn't like his wife coming. And here he's got Mantra Diksha and he didn't know or Mantra Diksha is not Sanyas Diksha or something like that. Whatever it is, he didn't know the full meaning also. But anyway, he knew that something wrong has happened to my son and very grave mistake has been committed. And so he just immediately, left and right, immediately came up to the room where Swamiji was staying. Okay, he went to his bedroom. At that time it was lunch time. All the monks had gone for lunch. I was serving him, so I was there. Nobody else was there. I was on the side by side room, uh, just preparing food mm. for him. He, he used to take late lunch. All the people will come, they will bring some some items, so he will just take make it prasad. <coughs> and this person went on. You cannot understand the language that he he gave. You know, thousands of people they are in law, they, they stand in queue to get one glimpse of him or to pay their respect to him. Such a great personality. The president of the whole Ramakrishna meditation all over the world. He is sitting there and this person comes and goes on abusing him like anything. He will not abuse anybody, any human being. Because he was full fire and he went on abusing. For 15 minutes he went on abusing, accusing, you are all liars. You are all calling yourself monks, you are liars, and you have not, without my permission, you have given diksha to my son, this and that, you are all liars. So many abusive languages he used. And I saw with my own eyes, Mara. Silent. Not a single wrinkle on his face. With one word, you would have got heat up and, and given a slap to him, had you been there. Not a single recall. Not a single recall. And the Swami in charge came. Then after, when he didn't get give any reply, then he went away. And when the Swami in charge came, he told only one sentence. What was to be done within two years will take now five years. This is only what he told. Nobody could understand what he is speaking. What could have been done in two years? It will take five years. Was absolutely unmoved. Dukhe shono dignamana sukhete vizyate striga. This sita pragya I have seen with my own eyes. This I am only one is it I am quoting. Then what happened? After five years, he had to come to USA for some type of this one. He told his wife, now I have to go to USA for two years. I must uh, take the blessings of your guru. Can you imagine the person who gives such a abyss language within five years is converted. He went all the way from that city to Belumat to take blessings of that Maharaj and he gave blessings. Then later on, of course, he gave Mantra Diksha also from himself. <laughs> and now he regularly goes to that ashram and gives his services, honorary services. A tremendous con uh, conversion took place. But he had told only this thing. What would have taken two years? will not take five. Exactly after five years, he became a devotee. But he was not at all moved. Absolutely not. So, very difficult to find out who is a relay soul, who is not. Anybody may claim to be a relay soul. Very difficult. So that's why we have to be very careful. If somebody says that I am a relay soul, then you have to be very careful. Because a real soul will never say that I am a religious. He doesn't want publicity or he will not like to be soul. In general. But it's a different thing. Swami Vivekananda was a very sincere spiritual aspirant. He was burning. In his heart there was a great burning desire to know God and realize truth. And that Sri Ramakrishna could see the sincerity of that. That's why Sri Ramakrishna replied, yes, I have seen God. And I am seeing him more intensely than I am seeing you. If you want, you can also see him, but you have to come to the laboratory and make that experiment and do spiritual practices. And then he did it and then he became Vivekananda. One of our great, uh, the, what I was used to, I talked to you about 10th world, President of Ramakrishna Order. The ninth President of the Order, Swami Madhavan, great realized soul. One day he was sitting and suddenly one young man came. 
Sir, I want to ask one question. Yes. Sir, have you seen God? In a similar fashion, as Narendra said, ask Sri Ramakrishna. Sir, have you seen God? Then, Swamiji, sometime he was starting to say, you, you see my boy, you are not Vivekananda. And I am not Ramakrishna. Come to the next question. <laughs> so usually they will not reply these questions, you know. So it's a very, very, uh, it's not a very slight thing that you can talk about. You know, a sincere spiritual aspirant, see Ram Vivekananda, get the reply. But you can see from the outward behavior, one who has got advanced, we may not be able to see the realized soul is a different thing. It's a very different thing. I mean, it is beyond our boundaries. Only a realized soul can understand the another realized soul. But at least we can say, find out one has advanced in spirituality or not. For that, these are the ER sticks. How much control one has got over anger or over other desires or how, what is the behavior pattern or how much is affected by attachment, non attachment. These are the things which we can see. And this is we must see before accepting the Guru. You must verify. This is what Sri Ramakrishna says that you must test your Guru. And Guru must test the disciple. And then you make it. And once you make it, one make him a Guru, then you obey blindly afterwards. First, of course, you must test, verify. And then once you have faith in Guru, then you follow the teachings. How many people you got can any questions at a time? In our mission, how many people get mantra this at a time? It depends upon. Okay. See, it depends. Previously, though, it was a small figure. Now, there are thousands waiting in the list, but that's, but it's a close group. Suppose not like, alive. not they like, you know, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> yes, go on. No, it is, it is a very <laughs> sacred mantra. It is given in the ears and it is not to be articulated by mouth. When you are doing, repeating the mantra, you should not utter it. It's a private mantra. This is Gayatri mantra. It's a standard mantra. Pranav, Om. It's a, so that mantra can be chanted loudly also. But this mantra that you receive from the Guru is very precious and very sacred. And very that's why it's sacred. Secret. Sacred. Yes. Does suffering have a purpose? Uh, I couldn't get does, it. Does suffering, suffering have, a have a purpose? Suffering has a purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what uh, our Vedanta says also. That, you know, happiness and suffering, you cannot avoid them. It is two coins of the same coin. So Swami Vivekananda says, happiness comes to a man wearing the crown of misery. <laughs> happiness comes to a man Wearing the crown of misery. We see the happiness, but don't see the crown that is misery. But suffering can bring transformation in one's life, can be a great teacher. And Swami Vivekananda said, I have learned more from my suffering than from happiness. I have learned more from my mistakes. So if we can take as an opportunity of having learned something, from the suffering. Suffering comes because of two reasons. Number one, as a, as a result of our past karma. Maybe this birth or that past birth. So it is good. Supposing you have taken 10 million dollars, some loan from some bank, and if you are paying back, it is very painful process, but one thing is there that now paying back. So you are relieved. Otherwise that loan, again interest will go on. Better to pay up now. And if you don't pay off the loan now, you will have to pay a heavier figure because of the interest. So, when you are suffering, you are paying back, you are returning whatever loan you have taken. So, it is a good thing that you are suffering. It is getting, your karmas are getting worked out, number one. Second, suffering may come also as a divine grace. Sometimes the grace of the divine comes in the form of suffering. Dukhme suvinan sab kare, sukhme kare na koe, jo sukhme suvinan kare, dukkha hai koe. Yeah. So I'm a little confused. If suffering has a good purpose, if I help somebody not to suffer, am I then not interfering with 
with that good purpose? A very good question. This is this is a very beautiful question. This is the question that was asked to Swami Vivekananda. Some people they came, they said that uh, <coughs> we want some money for the for saving the cows from going to the butcher's house. I said, yes, that is okay. I am a monk, I don't have money, but if at all it comes, I'll first give to saving the people from hunger. Now so much drought is going on. Are you doing for anything for those people who are suffering and who are starving? He said, no, no, no. You see, these people who suffer, that is because of their past karmas. We don't want to interfere into inter inter their destiny. Then Swami Vivekananda said, then we can also say that your cows are going to butcher's house because of their past karma. Then why do you do for that? So, the thing is that if maybe it is their karma, we can reduce their, we can give a, a relief to them by giving service to them. It helps in two ways. It helps them overcome their misery in a better way. And it removes your suffering. Because your karmas are also getting worked out. If you do service, answer, whether you want it or not, when you serve others, in your bank account, it goes on accumulated. But it is not for selfish purpose that I am doing unselfish service. <laughs> it is not for the selfish purpose of accumulating my punya that I am doing service. No, that is not the, there is not the purpose for which a person tries to serve. But he feels compassion. He feels that had I been in this stage, how much I would have suffered. And we are all one. So he is suffering is his equal to my suffering. So he feels that oneness with them. And there is God within him. So let me worship the God within him. I am not giving, I am not helping somebody. Swami Vikas says, cut out this word help from your mind. You cannot help. Whom can you help? You can only serve the Lord coming in the form of disease. And you are blessed that, that you got the opportunity. So if you try to serve the man, in that case you should not serve. Because he is suffering, let him work out his karma. But if you try to see God in him, God is suffering. So then how can I remain? Let me worship the God coming in the form of poor, coming in the form of the sick. Why? That is the real worship. And by that I will get peace of mind. By that? I will also realize my God. And by that, the God who is there will also get benefited. So it's a double way, double advantage, double benefit. That is the thing. You don't have any ask question. You don't have any question. That sacred, yeah. can I, that sacred mantra you just talked about, uh, is it the same for every person or are these mantras different? You know, one mantra for one person, one group. Yeah. Second. When the guru gives the mantra, that is a second mantra. Yeah. That is private mantra. That can should not be told. Okay. But there are certain general mantras like Gayatri mantra. Then there are other mantras. As I told you, the prayer that I told, Sarve Bhavantu Sutina. Then Sahana Vavatu. So many Vedic prayers. There are Vedic mantras. These are all can be chanted together. They can be chanted in public. They can be chanted by mouth, but there are some sacred mantras, very short mantras, they are tantric mantras. They are given by God, by, by the Guru to the disciple, they are too sacred. And that has to be not uttered by the mouth. This is different. So when we are talking about mantra diksha, then it is a diff, it is a imparting of the mantra by the Guru to the disciple in a particular ceremony. And that is a private mantra for that particular person. And that has to be told not to be uttered. So it could be different, right, from person? Yeah, yeah. Surely it has to be different. Yeah, it, it has to be different. Different karma. So many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How to do? Uh, how to be positive when you are surrounded by so negativity? Yeah, yeah. Very good question. This is the very big problem. Very big problem that how so positive you are when all around there is so much of negativity, so many negative forces are working. It becomes very difficult. So now that that is where the question of confidence comes. Number one, we should have confidence in in the principle. What is the principle? Satya meva jayate. Ultimately, truth shall triumph. We should have inner firm conviction. Ultimately, truth shall triumph. Number one. Number two, if I am following the path, 
right path. I believe in the law of karma. Today or tomorrow, I am going to get the result. It may be postponed. The result may not come today. I have planted a mango tree. I will not get the mango next year, but I will get after 10 years. Let me be sure about it. So we must have conviction about Satya Meva Jayate. We must have conviction about the law of karma when we are trying to do good to others. And then third, if everything happens by the will of the Lord, if you have faith in the Lord, then that positivity will be maintained. So confidence in ourselves and confidence in God. That ultimately truth self triumph. Ultimately, the good will prevail. But in the meanwhile, what to do? In the meanwhile, we should not pay any attention to the, to the people of the negative forces. They will try to dissuade you. They will try to take you away from the path. So you should not listen to them. Hati chale bajar mein kutta ho ke hajar saadun ko durbhav ne ninde chaya sansa. When the dogs are barking, the elephant goes there. He does not even look at them. So we should also go like the elephant. Don't look at the barking dogs, but don't tell them that you are barking dog. <laughs> don't tell them that you are barking dog. Otherwise they will criticize you more. But when somebody criticizes you, inside your heart you think dogs are barking. Let me not give any attention to them. Automatically they will be, they will come come round. Abraham Lincoln used to say, number of letters of criticism that I receive every day. If I start reading them every letter. I will not be able to do anything, any work for the nation. So I directly put them into the waste paper basket. <laughs> so let them criticize. They have got their own intellect. They will come. If you are on the right path, today or tomorrow, God will find you out. So let us, when somebody criticizes us, let us analyze. If we are wrong, let us apologize. If we are not wrong, let us go in our own path like the elephant, not being disturbed by others. And one thing more you should remember, whatever you will do, you will be criticized. Yes. That's true. Some people, they have got the habit of criticizing, but you should not be dissuaded that they are. They, are, they, they enjoy criticizing others, but you should not become a prey to that. You should not become to, to attention. I will give you an example. A sadhu, a monk, was going uh, along the path and then he became a uh, little tired, so he took uh, some rest uh, by the side of the river. There was a tree, so he lied down. When he lied down, he saw there is a stone there. So he took the stone and made the stone as a pillow, and he was sleeping. Now, after some time, some girls came to fetch water with the pitcher on their head. In India, it happens. Here, you get the water. In the villages, you don't get water like that. Even now, today, some villages already the water has come in the pipeline. So they they went to the picture. So then the one one girl started saying, "You see, these monks, they can give up everything, but whatever they give, they cannot give up their luxury. You see, now the fellow has got no pillow, so he is taking a stone as a pillow, but he cannot sleep without a pillow. He is such a nice, uh, such a person." He cannot give up luxury, though he has become a monk. Bhai sahab, Bhai sahab, sadhu bana hai, ko bina takiya ke chalta nahi hai, toh tapathar ko hi tarikaya, takiya bana diya. Likewise, they are talking within themselves and going for water. Now, this person was sleeping, but he had not yet got the sleep. He overheard. Then he said, oh, what a great lesson this girl has given to me. I have given up everything, can I not give up the pillow? So, immediately he removed the stone and he slept like this. Now, when these girls are coming down, you see, you see this, uh, these monks, they can give up everything, but they cannot give up their ego. We have told a little, and yet he felt so much insulted, <laughs> he has removed the stone. So, whatever you do, they are going to criticize. So, we know it, they will be criticized. You know, in Belumat, uh, in Belumat, what happens is in Calcutta, the Bengali people, you know, the Bengali boys, they are a little more, uh, you know, you can say Advanced. clever or smart, <laughs> and they they enjoy criticizing others, and they their strength goes up when they are in the boat. You know, when they are boat, and then there is a Ganges by the side of the Balumat. Balumat is just by the side of the Ganges. So in the Ganges, when they are going by a boat, that time suddenly they become little more powerful because nobody can catch them. 
they are in the river and we are in the bank side now in the evening rt before evening rt what happens we go to the ganges side we just wash our hands and feet and then go to the temple for the service for express service so and then you know the brahmacharis we are all monks but they are brahmacharis also for 10 years the first 10 years is training period that is they have to wear white clothes they have to brahmacharya of the ceremony and then they will get sannyasin so there are many brahmacharis in the provisional training center in the belumat so they would come in the evening and they are all types of brahmacharis they are black white tall short fat thin right so there was a very fat brahmachari <laughs> and he was going there and this fellow they are making remark from the distance we can hear listen they are making remark these fellows from where they are getting this food we do not know they are getting fatter and fatter such fat people from where they are getting food <laughs> likewise they criticize कौन सी चक्की का आटा खाते हैं सब मोटा होते जाते हैं देन आफ्टर सम टाइम जस्ट वे मीजे आफ्टर टू थ्री मिनट्स एनादर ब्रह्मचारी केम वेरी थिंग अगेन दे टॉकिंग सारे लोग इतना खाते जाता कहा है क्या सो मच ऑफ एंड हियर दे आर रिमेनिंग व्हाट इज द मैटर सो दे आर गोइंग टू क्रिटिसाइज वेद इन फैक्ट दे विल क्रिटिसाइज इफ यू हैव बीन दे विल क्रिटिसाइज so people will criticize negative people will criticize but you go on your positive direction don't give up your direction <laughs> can you share some gist of some given he came to thousand island i know he gave he made few people his disciples there Yeah. Oh, it's just because it's you know every book I read it talks about that Swami had such a wonderful time there. Yeah, Swami Himje himself told I was at my best at Thousand Island Park because he said I don't believe in public lecturing I believe in transmitting spirituality and so he but he selected twelve disciples just as I said to his disciples he selected twelve disciples and he spent six weeks in Thousand Island Park every year we have a retreat there. in the thousand and park it is under new york center so i was there till three years back in the month of july they opened it so six weeks swami ji was there and that time whatever talks he had given uh, one of the western disciples he noted down in the diary and that has come in the form of the book inspired talks read inspired talks it is really inspired talks wonderful of course they are not you know it's not a book it is you know collection of the great thoughts swami ji gave which is assorted they may not be connecting link but each and every sentence sometimes you feel it's a great sentence it is from an incarnation swami vivekananda was not an ordinary human being you can understand that prophetic words he it are were uttered from his mouth and that have been taken away by the notes the notes by world over and others so that inspired talks will give you more details there's a beautiful book inspired talks You can get it from our Vedanta Society here, oh, New York. Okay. Yeah, you can get it. Very beautiful. Any other books we can read? Yeah. Huh? Any other books? Suggestions for the book? Yeah, yeah. Very beautiful books. Now, one book, small book, I'll be giving as a gift because I'm so happy the way you are showing interest, the amount of interest that you are showing, and your sincerity, and because of that, I'm so happy that I would like to give you two books and one photograph. One is the photograph of Swami Vivekananda. Every one of you will get. One is my book, Happiness and Peace in Your Everyday Life. Everybody will get. And Thoughts of Power. You start with Thoughts of Power. I have brought. Yes. Keep it there. At the end, at the end, they will yes. take it. One one copy each. Thoughts of Power is a collection of very very powerful thoughts from the complete works of Swami Vivekananda. Nine volumes. Very beautiful collection. So that is worth reading every day. At least one sentence you read every day. After you read the whole thing and tick mark those which appeal to you. After two months, again tick mark those which appeal to you. You'll find it's different because you have grown up now. <laughs> so, but you try to read those. Wonderful. So, Thoughts of Power is the first book you should read. You should read the biography of Swami Vivekananda, life of Swami Vivekananda. Then third is life of Ram Krishna. Ram Krishna and disciple by Krishna Parishar Uttar. Uh, he was a novelist. This is not a novel, but the presentation is so beautiful. You feel as if you are reading a novel. 
the very first sentence of the book is this is the story of a phenomena i will not call him an incarnation which will repel some which will attract some and not call him a saint i will not call him anything this is the story of a phenomena a great phenomena but a real phenomena it is all based on facts but the presentation so which would you feel as a real novel ram krishna and disciple by christopher shirwood and the book on which i talk gave a talk here at the siddhanta society on 17th of uh, this month september the magic of the gospel that is gospel of shri ram krishna wonderful book so many people have been saved from suicide by reading that book i narrated all those incidents how they were saved from suicide how many people they are still getting the peace from that book how it can help in your spiritual life and that for the first time in the world history stenographic record of an incarnation teachings is there and i am not telling elder sagsley elder sagsley he has written his introduction to the gospel of sri ram krishna that making the good use of the circumstance in which he found himself am as produce a hagiography which is unparalleled in the world history nowhere you find the same words of the incarnation noted down on the same day christ teachings were were recorded after 200 years buddha after 250 years but here sri ram krishna same day master master mena the mena the wrote down in his diary and you get to all see the play the day the time the people so christopher is would say if i can use any one word for the gospel it is the word now you feel as if you are now sri ram krishna is talking to you now so that is the gospel of sri ram krishna is a beautiful book of course afterwards you can read the complete works of swami vivekananda which includes raj yoga bhakti yoga yani yoga karma yoga after which karma yoga can be read by all then uh, second is bhakti yoga or religion of love addresses on bhakti yoga these are two different things then third is gyan yoga and fourth is raj yoga is little difficult you remove i mean you you can bypass the sanskrit shloka part patanjali yoga sutras go to only the introduction part of swami ji even that also is good so these are the yoga and the letters of swami ji are very powerful and all of that you can freely download free of cost from the website advaitashrama.org from there you can download for my series my articles and everything can download from my my website arkambodadar.com/sn i will give the card if necessary so these are all freely downloadable but hard copies you can get from the tata society beautiful books in that thoughts of power also you will get the list of some of the books which will be very useful and this is the most important thing reading the books is the best way of all removing all negativity from our mind all the over that whole atmosphere is so polluted we are meeting so many people with negative forces but if we read this powerful thoughts it removes that negative effect and the positive thoughts are coming with with they come with this one and that ravinath himself told ravinath to tagore told romarola if you want to study if you want to know india study vivekananda in him everything is positive nothing negative so you will get all positive thoughts there in the uh, teachings of books of swami vivekananda so beautiful books are there and they are all easily downloadable from the internet everything is available free of cost from madhvikashram.org you can read download all the complete works of swami vivekananda but before you start with a small book that i am giving you then the life of swami vivekananda life of ram krishna by sri krishna shri and gospel and then you can read other books but it will be a great rewarding thing very rewarding so many people have been transformed by these books and i just love that you are from the temple house swami ji when he came what hardship he went through and how to keep a inner confidence to reach our goal because you know he had a lot of hardships too so yeah yeah this life is full of hardships when he was going to, when he went to banaras before coming to america he traveled all over the country 
So when he was in Benares, he went to Durga Devi temple. Durga Puja started from yesterday. <laughs> so Durga Puja, Durga Devi Mandir he went and he was coming out suddenly. Some monkeys started chasing him. Very big monkeys with black faces. Hanuman, what we call. Now, Swamiji started running and the monkeys running after him. He started running after him. One side was the pond, another side was the big wall. So, Swamiji went on running, running, running only one direction. And monkeys also running. Then he became tired. What to do? Suddenly, he found one, he, he heard one elderly monk shouting at him. Hey, Jaroma! Don't be afraid. Face the brutes. Face the monkeys. So immediately he stood up and he turned back and he did with his stick like this and all the monkeys fled away. Later on in American in lecture, in lecture in America he said, that day I learned one of the greatest lessons of my life. What is that? Face the brutes. Face the monkeys. Face the difficulties of life. If you get afraid, they will overpower you. If you face them, difficulties will run away. So this is how he himself faced the difficulties afterwards. Even before that, even he was very young, his father died, nothing to eat, his father, younger brothers dying out of hunger, starving, mother starving, and yet he took that great decision of renouncing the whole world. Can you imagine the, the turmoil that was undergoing that his mind? Then he was in going in search of peace, in search of some method, going all the country, and he became very much agitated seeing the miserable plight of the people. Then he said, I'll cross the ocean, bring science and technology from America and Western countries and money from there. In exchange, I'll give them nectar of Vedanta and all that. Then he went to America and uh, that is for attending the parliamentary religions because some medals he said, say, of course, he heard for the first time about Parliament religious when he was in Gujarat. Maximum period is spent in Gujarat. So my book is coming out, Swami Vivekan in Gujarat, in English and Gujarati. Uh, very soon it will come out. So it gives all the details what Swamiji already he did in whole, why he spent such a long time in Gujarat. So when he was in Gujarat, he heard for the first time about Chicago Parliament religious. So that from that time he was thinking and there's this some young people from Madras, they said, no, you must go. Then they collected some money, but it was not enough. So he distributed uh, sweets among the poor fishermen, children of the fishermen. Then again he was waiting that again they tried and get some money, got money hard enough to pay to purchase a third class ticket for the steamer, only to go up to Chicago. And then he was not sure, so he prayed. To Sri Krishna, he gave, got a visa, then he wrote to the Holy Mother Sharda Devi, she gave the permission. So he decided, finally Mahajab Khetri made the ticket into first class ticket. That's how he was able to meet Jamsaji Tata on the ship. And then he came here, after coming to Chicago, after two months, 31st May he started, 25th July he reached Chicago, and then he found they said that uh, parliament religious already, the enrollment is over and it will be uh, it will be started in September. So now he has to wait till September and now enrollment is over and they asked for, for the letter of introduction which he had not got. He thought simply he will go there like a mom. He thought he will go there and he didn't know the whole procedure that somebody has to sponsor it. And somebody has to sponsor, and somebody has to give a letter of recommendation. He didn't know it. Now what to do? Now Maharaj of Ketri, out of his love for him, had made a very beautiful dress made of silk, and a silk turban and silk cloth and all that, which is very good for plus 50 degrees Celsius. And there it was minus 30 degrees Celsius in Chicago. He didn't know the climate of Chicago. He gave the climate on the climate of Ketri, plus 50 degrees Celsius. That was the dress and he had no clothes, no money to take the, to purchase the clothes, no money to feed. He said, now I have got uh, not money enough for even to feed food also for a few days, it will exhaust. At least if you send me some money for going back. <laughs> That's what he told. He cannot go back, he has no return money. He cannot stay there because the hotel people are taking so much charges, within one week it will exhaust. He has no clothes. No food, 
starving in Chicago. Can you imagine? And then he remembered that he had met a lady, Miss Zenbaum, while he was traveling from Vancouver to Chicago by train. He, she had told him, Swami, uh, please be my guest. When he thought that now there is no other way out and the hotel are charging so much, then he remembered this lady that she had invited. So he gave a telegram that you had invited me and now Parliament Regents is there is a long time, there is a gap, September, it is only July, August beginning. So if you want I can come. And then <laughs> without waiting for the reply he went there. <laughs> and Miss Senborn was also very happy to invite him, mean, to keep him because every day evening he will put him in a horse carriage and go around the whole city to show a curio from India. And so she was happy to show a curio to the people of that small village and uh, in return and Swami said I have to go through all this, for all this because I am getting free lodging and boarding. So I have to go and sit down in the horse carriage and like a creature, a peculiar creature from India with a peculiar dress. She is showing all the people. Yeah. But that became a very uh, a divine intervention because when she was, when he was the guest of Miss Ketson Bond in the neighborhood, there was Prophet John Henry Wright. And when he came to know and he talked to him, he became so much enamored. What wisdom, what knowledge. Swami, you must, you must go to the parliament religious. Swami said, well, I came only for that purpose. <laughs> I came only for that purpose. You are telling me now, but I came only all the way from India for that purpose only. But they are telling you must have a letter of recommendation. And then Prophet John Henry Wright said, Swami, to ask credentials from you is like asking the sun as to what right it is to sign on the earth. And then he wrote himself a letter of introduction to John Henry Barrows. John Barrows who was the chairman of that committee. Here is a man who is more learned than all our professors put together. And that is then with that letter of recommendation, Swamiji came to Chicago and he reached here in Chicago on 9th of September. It was night when the train reached. And what happened? He had a fellow passenger. He wanted to go to the chairman of this parliament religious committee. So he told, don't worry, I know that, I will show you the path, you come with me. And he took the address in his pocket. And then he forgot and simply when the train reached their station, he somehow disappeared. Now, Swamiji hasn't got the address where to go. The address has been taken by that fellow. He doesn't know. Then he started asking some people. Now, they didn't know English. He didn't know German. He had learned French. But he didn't know German at that time. And that area at that time was a German-speaking area. So, they were not replying also properly. He was wanted to know how to go, where to go. Nobody is replying by the time that it started. Very much, it was a very shivering cold and he had no clothes. So somehow there was a railway station, there was a carriage. It was lying vacant. He went inside the carriage. And the whole night he was doing like this. Next day morning he caught some smell of water. Michigan Lake. Mm -hmm. Michigan Lake is nearby. So went to the site because you know he, he was from Bengal where a lot of water is there. He could smell the water. So he went there, Michigan Lake. Near the Michigan Lake he went up. Now he was hungry. From the evening he has not taken anything. No money. And he doesn't know. He, he may be having little money but how to get from where? No restaurant. Just as it happens in India, monks, you know, you can go to any house, we'll just knock. Oh, Bhiksham Dehi. And then the landlady will bring some bhiksha, some chapati and all that. So like that he bear bound the, he called the bell. The butler opened the door and he said, I want bhiksha. And <laughs> they slammed the door on his face. <laughs> and was in America, how can you get bhiksha? Madhukari. So I got Madhukari bhiksha in Switzerland. This is a different thing that I'll tell you later on. So, 
no visha, then they he became exhausted. Now he cannot move, fully exhausted, no food, so much of cold. And then he sat down under a tree by the side of a church. Then he said, okay Lord, if you want, you brought me here. I had asked you, you told me to come, that's why I have come. And now you want me that I should die here with this hunger and cold. Let it be, but I am not going to now stand up from here. And he just sat down for dying. Sarat bhai, I mean no phone chill out. Sarat bhai, I mean. Just a minute. Hello, Sarat bhai. When he said, okay Lord, let it be. Let your will be done. Let me die here, out of hunger. At that time, the window opened from the other side. And then the lady came and said, Are you a delegate to parliament? He said, Yes. He said, But I don't know the address. He said, I know the address. I'll take you. And she took her. She took him to her house, fed him everything, then took him to this residence. And then he was admitted with the parliament. The letter, letter of Mrs. Hell, which became the headquarter of Swamiji. And then, on 10th night, he was lost in a rich man's house. Uh, 11th, he delivered his sorry speech. 9th, he had to pass the night in a, in a train carriage. 11th, became so world famous. All the doors of the rich people became open to him. Everywhere, posters, Swami Vivekananda, Hindu monk of India. He, he created a history in the whole world. So much, everywhere, Vivekan, 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 he became, suddenly became a celebrity and became the world famous. Everybody wanted Swami Vivekan to be his guest. And he became a hero. Whenever he would cross the platform, people would be clapping, clapping and clapping. He became a sort of, in a great attraction. And the newspapers, they were all so much of praise that the greatest figure in the parliament religion is Swami Vivekan, New York Herald wrote. After listening to him, we feel our foolish in our part was in missionaries to India. There is a so that, that, that we should invite Mr. Trump. And so much, it created a great stir. And he became world famous. But he was weeping, even on 11th night itself, that so many people here have so much of luxury, but my people do not have the sufficient food. That was the greatness of Swamiji. He, be, he did not become, you know, because of name and fame, he did not become egoistic or sinful. But rather he started weeping for his own country. Whatever it is, up to. then parliament religions, then he became famous, then he stayed for three and a half years. So whatever it is, even then difficulties, then difficulties, you know, when he became famous, popular, then his own friends who were from India, they become jealous. And they, Swamiji uh, be, uh, got so many good friends from America, so many of them were Christian missionaries. They were all, they became his friends. But some Orthodox Christian missionaries, they did not like it, like, didn't like it because uh, their income went down to one tenth because of the Swamiji's this preaching. And so they, they joined hands with those people who had become jealous. And they, all sorts of bad things they circulate about Swami Vivekan, wrongly. And assassinated on his character. It so happened that Swami is invited to somebody, when he goes there, it is locked. The house is locked. Why? Because he has been told who, why, whom you have invited. He's not of good character. Like that. And uh, he did not, it took long time for him. That time there was no email, no telegraph. So a telegraph also was there, but no big, a big telegraph. So he had to take get the letter of recommend that letter of this one approval that no he is not a vagabond as others are telling. It took a long time for him to prove. In the meanwhile, all sorts of scandals they they even uh, published in the newspaper or the caricature about him, cartoons. All this Swami had to hear. And then Detroit, the real war happened. Some of the orthodox Christian missionaries they wanted to, you know, go this and that. So he had to fight single night. So it was a very great struggle Swami he had to do. And then he spoiled his health because of so many lectures he had to do, so much of travel, not getting proper food, he broke down, then 
still he remembered. Then he went, 1897, he went to India. So the whole life of Swami is again there is so much of struggle. Then with great struggle he started Ramakrishna mission. Again he had to do relief work. Then he went for, again 1900 he came here. <coughs> 1902, 4 July, 1902, he left his body. So, his whole life is nothing but the struggle. He himself said, and Maharaj quickly asked him, Swamiji, what is life? Swamiji immediately replied, My dear Prince, life is nothing but the struggle of a being under the circumstances, trying to press it down. And his whole life is a life of struggle. But he is faced with boldly. Faced the whole struggle boldly. That is, Whole life itself, Swami's life is very inspiring. How much of, you are talking about negativity, so much of negativity all around, so much of negative criticism about him, and so much of all the forces joining together, all the negative forces. Even his friends, his own friends, were because of jealousy of India, they join hands with Christian missionaries and all. He single handed out with the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, so very good. Yeah. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, you can meet personally, you can say you are not here. So, yeah. 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 so let us fill up the valley, then again you can shoot any number of questions. No problem. <laughs>